uh, we'll go and get started with Ava. Scott, you guys have talked a lot about um, the ability or inability to close games at different points in the season. What went well uh, really late in the fourth quarter tonight? Uh, well, Russell calmed us down, made a couple of big shots. Um, I like Brad's attacks. I really like Brad's attack. I thought he could have easily gotten to the free throw line. Uh, but we played we played hard. We played hard. It's nice having everybody back. It gives you the best chance and you have all kinds of options. When you when you have that, you know, we can we can compete against anybody. And that's the great thing about it now. We just have to stay healthy and and, and keep it consistent throughout the remaining games of the of the season. And um Brad played 37 minutes after you you said he would be on a minutes restriction. At what point does he say, no, leave me in? Or do you say, if you feel good enough, you can keep going? About four minutes into the game, he said, I, I can play more. I can play more. I, I'm thinking to myself, really? We're not, we're even, we, ha we haven't even been through a first quarter yet. But I, you could tell, I mean, he, you could tell just in our meeting this morning that he had a little bit more pep in his step. And you can just, you can just tell. I was glad that. I mean, I communicate with the staff. I communicate with him throughout the game. And he wasn't, I mean, if it wouldn't have went to overtime, it would have been, I mean, he would have obviously played it. But I was trying to really, at that point, I just, all I was telling me, just keep it like at 36. That's what he's played most of the year. Um, and then we'll see how he handles it tomorrow. But yeah, I really try to keep it in the 34 range. But it's just talking a few minutes, not that big of a deal. Chase. Scott, you've used uh, center by committee uh, throughout the season. Tonight, they, they had a lot of success collectively against Rudy Gobert. Uh, what do you think was the key, particularly for Lopez and Gafford? Well, we've been we've been doing that, you know, ever since TV got hurt early in the season. And I think it's been pretty good. I mean, I, I don't I've never done it before. I've never, you know, never done this before, but I'm trying to figure out ways to get the best combinations. And it's definitely, trust me, it's tricky. It keeps me up at night throughout the day trying to figure it out. And and then you got to factor in who's playing well, who's playing well with, the, with them and foul trouble. But I kind of like them all. I mean, Gaff's obviously in a, in a minute restriction. And Rolo, I mean, he's a, he's buckets down against the second, second line uh, bigs and, we kind of they all give us a little bit different. Uh, Gafford gives us a lot of bit different, but it's 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 um, he's his his minutes and his efficiency has been really good because he keeps it simple. Get something at the rim, and he catches lobs and runs the floor. He can test shots, and you know, I, I thought I thought I thought all three bigs gave us some good minutes. And um, Davis, if you look at the box score, it was only 10 points, but how helpful was it, the timing of when those points came? The timing, the timing was uh, critical. I like the fact that after the first quarter, we knew we, we this team is, is incredibly gifted, experienced, offensive talent, defensive talent. They, they got everything right now. I mean, this is, I wouldn't be surprised um, if they, they advanced to the, to the NBA finals. But, you know, that first quarter, we gave them so many, like, mistake threes. And when you do that, they can drop – they can drop um, 42 on you. But I thought that after that, after that, um, the next two quarters, it was really great defense. Even the fourth quarter, I was thought it was good defense. We were getting – I thought we had chances to get to the free throw line, and we had guys on the floor, and they were just getting in transition. And, and that was tough. And then they got to the free throw line all, all, all quarter. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, these last five or six games with Rolo, how, how do you evaluate this streak of just a guy kind of doing the exact same move over and over again? Do you consider it a hot streak or do you think the, you guys or he has unlocked something that's sustainable the rest of the year? Well, I, I think, I mean, he's getting deep position. We like the matchups. And when we see a matchup we like, Russell has good synergy with him. And and 
and he has good hands. He has great footwork. And I, I, I think he's, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting him to play like this. I mean, every, every game he's not going to, you know, only miss one or two shots. I, I get that. But the positioning, the shot attempts, there's no question that he's really good around the basket. He's very confident either hand. And, but that's, that's becoming a very valuable um, offensive weapon for us. Zach. Coach, it seemed like Bongo really gave you a push there in the second. Um, what is he? What has he been like, kind of behind the scenes, not really having a set role, except you kind of just throw him into the fire when you need him. Yeah, I mean he's 21 years old, and he's played a lot of more minutes last season than he played his first season by a, a ton. He hasn't been getting a lot of consistent minutes lately, but we got to keep working and keep developing. I came to the media. A room tonight and he's in there in the visiting team's uh weight room and that's a great sign to me because he needs to get stronger he needs to be able to absorb some you know offensive push-offs and, and be able to defend without fouling with some more strength but we're going to keep working him, and i'm glad he came in because it, it's hard you know he doesn't play a lot and to come in and, and to play well he had a big shot got his defensive stop made a layup the other layup did everything it did everything but go in the basket, but I thought his minutes were very important. All right, got a couple more here. Neil? Hey, Scott. Uh, Denny has been better about not getting into foul trouble, it seems, recently, but today, the first half, you know, couldn't have gone worse for him. He had an elbow that was called against him. Mitchell got a call against him. A screen, he got a call. Do you think that this is just like a random occurrence and he's gotten better at you know, staying out of foul trouble? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he he's definitely he's gotten better. I mean, he's not – I mean, I wasn't going to, you know, plan on only playing him nine minutes, but, you know, that's just the way the game is. you got to adjust. That's why we have – now we have a – now we have a, a healthy team, and, you know, sometimes we can absorb some foul troubles and, and situations like that. Uh, it's all learning experience for Danny. Uh, I love his – like I tell you guys all the time, I love his effort, I love his – his care level and it's just you know some nights are going to be better than others and all young players not just first year second third year players have the same the same you know sometimes you have some good moments and then sometimes you wish you know you didn't you didn't play that night but tonight was a, a game for him that it's, it's another experience playing against good, good players i thought i thought a couple of times he did foul and you know, they, the referee's going to call it And we'll finish up with Kellen. Hey, Scott. So this is the second time that you beat the Jazz who have the best or, you know, have the most wins in the NBA. But, you know, the, this year's Wizards has also been pretty inconsistent sometimes in terms, you know. So what is this putting in account the wins in context of this season altogether? What do you think this as a, those, those these two wins was about the team? Well, I mean, I'm not, we still got a lot of games left. He's still got, I think, 19. Um, we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep challenging each other. We're going to keep pushing uh, each other. I'm going to keep uh, pushing the team forward. I know we've went through, I mean, as this season goes on, I can say I've experienced things I never thought I would ever experience as a head coach. And But I'm still proud of the fact that we keep fighting and we're not making excuses. And we still have a chance to keep, you know, to have a, a really cool and interesting uh, journey to this season. But I like the way guys are playing. Everybody seems to accept their roles. And when you have a, a, a healthy roster, this is, I mean, we haven't really had that for a long time, but it's kind of nice having it. We just got to stay healthy. And, you know, even Rolo, he's a guy, sometimes I think he's a knucklehead, no matter how how cold it is, he still has a T-shirt on. And we can't afford to get him sick because – He's in a nice rhythm right now. Thank God it's springtime and the weather's turning so he can wear a T-shirt and be like a normal person. Thanks, Scott. All right, see you guys. Thanks, Coach. Yep. B, I know you missed a few free throws late and you were kicking yourself about it, but just to, to get that, grind that out um, and end a winning streak like that, 24 straight home games. I know you were part of the 17 
game one that we had, you know, back in 16, 17. What, like, how big was that? Uh, first place, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it's an opportunity to be able to play a game that I love. Uh, but most part, is it was tough. I didn't know they had 24 straight wins at home um, until after the game. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's just a, a testament to them. And, uh, you know, I've, like you said, we I've been a part of something like that a few years ago. We won 17 straight at home. Uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. You know, you just feel like you just can't be beat at home. Uh, but, you know, granted, we, we played really well tonight. Uh, aggressive on the defensive end and made a lot of things tough for them. You know, this is a team that really uh, first and three points attempted and first and three points made. A lot of guys shooting high 40s, 50s, you know, from three. So. Uh, we definitely had our hands full, but I, I love how we accepted all the challenges and made it tough. How have you liked playing with Gafford so far? Well, I haven't had a lob threat in my whole career. So uh, I like the fact I just throw the damn ball up to the rim and he'll go get it, even if it's a horrible pass. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, Coach Brooks said that very early in this game, you were telling him that you could exceed uh, what was supposed to be a minutes restriction. So how did that go from your perspective? And just how did you feel coming back from the back tightness? Well, if I'm the one that said I don't want minutes, I think I should let you know how I felt. But uh, everything feels good. My body feels good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel good early on. I didn't have any problems. No minutes. Sorry, sorry. Um, and when you when it comes to Daniel Gafford and just having him in the lineup, um, did, what's it like having him when you go up in, in a game against a guy like Rudy Gobert? When you know you've played so many games against centers like that without a player like Gafford, what's it like now having one like him? Oh, uh, I mean, he has to respect his man. You know, a lot of times, a lot of teams will have their big stay with me to be able until I pass the ball. Uh, but he has to respect that his man will will dunk the ball all night if he if he's not respective in that fashion. So uh, we just we just constantly try to make it tough and put pressure on the defense getting downhill. Uh, and Gaff is a good catch catch guy, finish, catch and look. You know he he does a great job of being under control when he has the ball. So uh, just having him has been terrific. Uh, he's a quick learner, fast learner, uh, super athlete as we all know. Uh, like I said, I've never had a lot of fit before, so it's it's definitely fun and exciting. Hey, Brad, uh, it's it's been like five or six games where I feel like Rolo hasn't missed a hook shot. What what would you describe makes him as successful as he is, which is kind of throwing up the same shot over and over again in the post? I ain't broke, don't fix it, Fred. You know, uh, he, he just does a really good job of using his body. Uh, and... Guys can't block it. I mean, that's just that's just the tell of the tape. You know, you had a guy tonight who couldn't block his shot. You know, as a defensive player here, he couldn't block his shot. So we were, you know, we we always go to that. You know, no matter who we're playing, you know, we're going we're going to roll though. We're giving him touches. Uh, he does a great job of being strong with the ball, being under control, and, and you can't block it. I, I don't know what it is, uh, but you know, it's a testament to his hard work and him really perfecting that part of his craft. And, and on a more serious note, uh, you know, the Timberwolves and, and the Twins and, and I believe the Wild also, they, they suspended their games tonight after the, the, the police shooting in, uh, in Minnesota. And you've just been very outspoken on very similar issues. And, and I was just wondering what your reaction was to, to some, I'm sure you saw those games were suspended today and what your reaction was to seeing that. Uh, Minnesota, that's a great job. I mean, obviously being in that, that state, um, I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. I haven't seen the video footage of, of what actually happened with, with Dante, but um, just hearing, you know, about what happened. Um, I'm not a police officer, but, I mean, you can't – it's very hard for you to mistake a taser for a gun. I mean, that's – I don't know. I'm, I'm not about to sit here and – say all police are like that but in that situation uh i don't know i'm i'm not i'm not falling for that one. so um kind of ironic you know in the last few years it's been a lot of those you know 
stories coming up, you know, somebody is fatally shot without having a weapon because the officer thought it was a taser. That doesn't, well, shit, should we take tasers and guns away from police too then? Like what, what is the ultimate, you know, like what is the end game here? You know, so it's frustrating. It's annoying. It continues to happen. Uh, it's bullshit, uh, honestly. Uh, so, I don't know. America needs to be better, and we got to fix our police systems. Yeah, right. ASAP. All right, last question to Quinn. I, I even got another one. Even the, the fellow troop who was arrested, and the officer said, Yeah, you should be scared. That's bullshit. Because here you have a guy who literally lives and fights to protect so we can wake up every damn day. What if he decides to use his military skills on those two police officers? Will he be in the wrong? Like, where does it stop? You have somebody who protects us in the military. Would you trade spots with him? But you got a gun in your hand and, you know, a lot of power behind that gun. Go ahead, Q. I think that was, uh, that's it. I'm, I'll, I'll table my question. All right, Brad. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Quinn. Hey, Daniel, I'm just, you seem like you have this energy about you, and guys love to play with you, or especially hearing you. What do you think you can really bring um, to a team, like with your athleticism and your ability to go up and pretty much catch everything? Brad said previously in this last press conference that he can just throw the ball anywhere, no matter if it's a bad pass, and you go get it. Can you just kind of describe, like, what you deliver to a team, even though we know it, and also playing with guys like Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill, who love playing on the court with uh, I mean, just really coming out and just throwing with them take my mask. I feel like y'all can't hear me. <laughs> but um, just really just coming out and playing my game, you know. I've been an energy guy all my life. I just come out. I mean, I love the game of basketball. I'm going to come out and just work work my tail off as much as I possibly can. I got a defensive mindset first, and then I uh, worry about offense second. I mean, like I, tell, like I said, the first time that I got to Washington, you can throw it to the moon and I'll bring it back down there. Um, other than that, I mean, I just come out and I play ball. I play hard. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't let anything really kind of like cloud my thoughts when I'm on the floor. I try to keep a positive mindset as much as I possibly can to be able to withstand, like, you know, the pressure that comes with the game, you know, being able to have that mental aspect to go in and not let anything phase you because teams see that. And, you know, they're, they're, they're wear and tear when it comes to, you know, down the stretch and stuff. So I just come in with a positive mindset. I just play my game, you know. Get guys open and get myself open at the same time. And a lot of different teams throughout this season have allowed fans. Some haven't. With Utah, it seems like tonight was the most apparent that you could like feel the energy and hear those fans. What did it feel like to kind of you know be down the clutch in a stretch of a very you know heated game and kind of feel that energy, especially in the free throws and you know down that last you know, minute or so? I mean, you know, the fans' energy is electric. You know, it's it's always it's always going to be contagious. And I mean, it's good to see as many people as we had tonight. And it's good to see that many people back in the gym, you know, just being in certain gyms, certain things like that, where they don't have fans and stuff, kind of gets depressing at some point in time. <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's like, you know, it's just you, your staff, and the other team, you know. But it's always good to have fans in the building because, you know, they love the game just as much as we do. And having them in there and having their energy and certain things like that makes the game just, uh, you know, it's just like clockwork. It just it just makes it good. <laughs> I really can't describe it. It's an indescribable feeling that I get, especially when fans are in the building. Chase. Hey, man, first of all, uh, it looked like you were kind of holding your side during the game. Um, was it that like your your ribs or your muscle? Or like what, how would you kind of describe what, what happened there? Uh, I kind of fell on my shoulder um, going for a rebound. I wouldn't say – I got, I don't know if I got pushed or anything like that, but I mean, I hit the ground kind of hard. Um, I came up and it was just, it was just bad. Um, it wasn't my ribs or anything. It was just like behind my shoulder. So 
this. I got a heat pack on it now, so it's feeling better. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too fatal to where I was supposed to come out or anything like that. I'm a tough guy. I wish I walked it out. I'll be good tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the start you've had with this team, I mean, it's only four games, but it, it's just gone so well. You, you've won three of them, and you're putting up really good numbers. Um, just what have you kind of learned about the fit between you and the Wizards in this short period of time? Really just coming in and doing my job. You know, like I said with the first question, I think it was the first question, just like having a defensive mindset first, then just going – doing whatever I can with offense. You know, I try to protect home as much as I possibly can. They brought me here because of, you know, what I can do on defense. And I mean, you know, they brought me here to do my job. So that's what I'm going to do. Zach. Uh, DG, when you go up against someone like Gobert, who kind of, he, he does what you do, but he's a little bit bigger, you know, just like, what have you learned from his game? And, uh, and how do you feel like you fared tonight? Um, really just with his pacing and whatnot, you know, he, he plays a great amount of minutes throughout all games that he plays through, you know, he, he does what he, he does, what he has to do, you know, he blocks shots, he sets screens, pick and roll, you know, he doesn't really try to do anything that's bringing him out of his comfort zone. He's playing his game and he's staying in his comfort zone, staying in his body and just learning from that. I mean, just being in a, I would say not just like in his position, you know, learning from that, just being a shot blocker and just really just pacing myself uh, because, I mean, I want to I want to play for sure, you know, a whole lot more minutes, just like how he's playing. You know, I want to be able to withstand, like, you know, going up and down as much as I possibly can. I know I'm on limited minutes right now because I'm just not getting back. Sooner or later, I'm going to try to be in that position. And I, I want I want that to stick. You know, I don't I don't want to come back in that situation and take that for granted again just like having all those minutes because, I mean, that's when coaches put his trust in me to be out there longer. So I got to show him that I can be able to withstand that. Do you know how much longer you'll be on a restriction? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you know, I just come and play ball. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's it. All Appreciate right. you. Thank you all. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for tonight. We'll see you back Wednesday night.